Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be drawing a holly sprig and then perhaps putting some watercolour paint onto that. So I'm going to draw it in ink but I'm going to do a few pencil guidelines to begin with. So before we start if you want to have a look at the holly that you're drawing so this reference photograph I will link in the description below if you want to have a go at it. I'm not going to do it exactly as it is on here I'm just using this as a reference to get the basic shapes right. Um, so the nice thing about this photograph is that it's really well lit, we've got the sun catching the edge of the leaves so we can really see the shapes of the leaves very well there. One thing you will notice is that the berries are much further down than this last sprig of leaves. Quite often when you see illustrations at Christmas the berries are nestled right into the leaves but if you actually observe the bushes outside you'll see that they often have this new growth of this year's growth with some extra leaves ahead of the last lot of berries and you'll see these ones aren't very prickly here because they're quite young leaves this one's a bit more prickly um, but within the bush you'll get lots of different leaves they won't all be as prickly and also you get lots of different varieties of holly so really look and have a think about it before you start and when working from a photograph don't think you have to include everything you don't have to include every leaf um, you're making a picture, you're not slavishly copying a photograph and the person that's looking at your painting later isn't going to have this reference photograph in front of them to say that there was X amount of berries or leaves. It's just to get the shape so that we know it's that particular plant. So we've got a lovely cluster of lots of berries here. We've got leaves going in different directions. We've got some coming towards us, some going away from us. So it's a really nice one to have a go at. But like I say, we'll leave some out. I'm going to make it simplified for a little Christmas illustration and I'm going to keep it very, very simple. So I'll just do a few pencil guidelines to begin with and then I'll do a lot more detail using the ink. So to begin with, I'm just going to do a shape of the actual stem and I'm not doing the whole thing just that nice upward curve and then I'm just going to position some leaves so I'm not going to put all the shapes and the prickles on and when I draw a leaf I tend to draw the vein first so if you draw the vein going that way and then put the leaf around it in a very rough loose shape and then afterwards we can do that more detailed like I say with the pen so I'm not including any prickles or anything like that just popping these leaf shapes in And I'm going to ignore the ones that are behind and try and simplify this shape. And then down to the berries. And the berries, look at how things are attached. When you're drawing any nature, any flowers or um, leaves, anything like that, look at how they're all attached and how they work together. And I'm not counting these berries. I'm not looking at where each one lines up to another one. I'm just making a very loose idea of where they might be. Got another leaf going this way. And one coming down here and that's probably as many leaves as I'm going to put on. I wanted it very simplified. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and put lots more detail in that with a pen which may take, may take me a while. Um, and you need, when you're using a black pen, you, and we've got so much sunlight on here and sunlight on the stem and on the berries, just be careful that you don't put black pen absolutely everywhere where you're going to want those highlights later on. About what's happened to me from July up till now. Don't know where, don't know how. Lately, I've come to realize that I can't see it in your eyes. So oh, it's true. I'm so glad you feel it too. And nothing to hide, falling in love. So 
summer ended, but we did not. We started some things, thing that we got grew stronger. Each day we're together. On the way, oh, we're falling in love. To me, it's perfectly clear. We're falling in love. It's true, this part of the year we have something in store for us. We're falling in love. Hey. Walking around, you and me Christmas time's got the best of me Then it starts to snow in our hearts We both know that we're falling in love As you can see I've kept that very simple, I've just indicated one or two shadows with the pen just by using some lines but I've not put a lot of detail in there at all and I want to keep this as plain and simple as I can just to give that feel of the holly. If you want to do a very detailed drawing of this you could do because like I say it's a really really clear lovely photograph to work from so you could do a very precise drawing of that if you really wanted to and you had the time. I've taken some of the leaves out, I've not bothered counting the berries etc, I just wanted to keep it simple. So the colours that I'm going to use are the Sennelier travel set which I've used quite a bit. As you can see we've got some lovely reds in there so probably go for this one here um, and we'll probably use some yellow actually because there's quite a bit of yellow and I might use some green but I'm going to use them more or less straight from the pan and straight onto the paper not doing any mixing really um, and I'm going to leave the background white. So I should have said this is a, a mixed media pad and it's a lovely smooth paper because when you're working with an ink pen and you want to do a nice drawing you don't want your pen bumping across a, a rough surface of a watercolour paper. So just think about that when you're using a pen to do some precise drawing that you what paper that you're using that you want it to be quite nice and smooth. So I'll go ahead now and put some colour on this. Like I said, just using these more or less straight from the pan and not mixing them. So I will wet each individual leaf and the berries and then just pop the colour straight into that. Okay, so I need to apologise at this point. I didn't press record on the camera. It's been one of those days today. Everything seems to be going wrong. So I'm really sorry about that. So all I've done is, like I did with these first two leaves, is wet the area and then pop the colour in straight from the pan. So the red for the berries and this green for the leaves. And then I used a little bit of the sienna with some red added for the stem. But I've kept it really, really, really simple. And as it's starting to dry now, what I'm going to do is pop some other colours over the top. Because with the leaves, where we've got shadows and where we've got highlights, it's showing slightly darker and lighter. So I'm going to pop some yellow over the top of some of the brighter areas. And that's going to make these leaves a little bit more 3D. I'm just popping this straight over the top without any water to begin with. And not necessarily following exactly what's on the photograph, just varying it a little bit. Not happy with how thick the paint is on 
this last leaf and actually I'll th the, some of the drawing here is a bit cat candied as well. Just pop that yellow over the top side where the sun is shining on there and if you just follow the vein up and do one half it just gives that sh leaf a little bit more shape and on this side we've got this turning over here and then it's darker underneath but I don't want to overdo it with these colours So just lightly put the yellow on and the green will still shine through there. You can see here the red bled into the green a little bit and that doesn't matter too much. You will find on a lot of plants that the colour of the flowers or the berries is actually present in the stems and leaves as well. So do let them merge where they touch. And that yellow has made all the difference to that. Now I'm going to do something similar with the berries using exactly the same colour as before quite thickly out of the pan there and just by putting a touch on one side or the other of these berries you're making them much more 3D. So this is quite an illustrative little drawing really. but you just get that spherical shape just by touching one side giving some shadow to those berries you'll notice this is quite a small brush it's actually a size 3 and it's a nice fine brush there and it's a sable one so obviously that's going to depend on how big you want to do the whole thing. So where it's a little bit darker, I'm just going to mix a tiny bit of that green with a little bit of blue in it, just to make it slightly darker than the first colour. And we'll just pop that in one or two places where it's very shady. So this side of this leaf... And again, the other colours are still showing through. And under here. Again, I'm not really looking at the photograph. I'm just mixing it up a bit so that we've got a bit of variety in the light and the shade. And I'm just going to, with a damp brush, touch the edge of that just to soften that off a little bit. You could have wet the area first. I still feel that this leaf here is very dark compared to the rest of them, but I don't think it looks too bad. And for me that's probably enough. I don't want to go on piling more and more paint on and adding more and more detail. You've got a little bit of detail there with your pen. Very, very simple, very, very crisp and fresh against that nice bright white background. So I hope you found that useful. I again apologise for the lost video. There wasn't really anything that you missed apart from just watching me apply that paint. Just wetting each leaf and then popping the colour in. So the reason really for just putting that water in first and then dropping the colour is you get this softer, more watercolory effect but there's nothing wrong with you just painting straight onto the paper providing you're not letting it dry out too much and getting hard edges. Working this way, wetting it first, means that you're not rushing quite so much and worrying about it drying out too quickly. So although that was a little bit of a rushed video and like I say things haven't just quite gone to plan today, it's been one of those days, um, I hope you did find it useful and I'm sure that you will like that reference photograph if nothing else because it's an absolutely lovely picture to work from and you can put so much detail in there. If we look at these colours they're absolutely beautiful, that colour of the stem, so you could go a lot more detailed than I have and use that for something for a Christmas decoration or a Christmas card or something like that. 
So you may have noticed, those of you that are regular to my channel, that I didn't have a video out on Monday or last Monday. I've just decided in these last few weeks that I'm now going to go down to one YouTube video a week, which will be on a Thursday afternoon. I'm just really struggling to find the time to do two every week. Um, and to give it the attention that it needs. So for the time being, I'm just going to be doing one on a Thursday afternoon. So for those of the, you that are new to my channel, I'll be here every Thursday afternoon at two o'clock um, and we'll do a variety of subjects, some watercolour, we we'll use brush oil, all sorts of other media in drawing and painting, mostly for beginners. I'll be back again next Thursday with another tutorial or demonstration. In the meantime, enjoy your painting and drawing and bye for now. Mm -hmm.